Hey y'all, my name is Jesse Johnson and I coach spiritual entrepreneurs in building seven figure businesses. In this video, we're going to explore the question of to refund or not to refund. Everything you want already. I want to start by giving you, first of all, a huge celebration for even watching this video. This subject is uncomfortable, it's a little tender for people. Most business owners would rather ignore it until they absolutely have to face it. And the fact that you're here willing to confront it head on before you necessarily have to is fantastic. That's a huge part of the teaching that I'm going to offer in this video and so I just want to celebrate you out the gate. The second thing I'll say is that I'm not going to tell you in this video the right or wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is very dependent on you. I can't tell you, at least not without knowing much more about you and your business. So I want to empower you in this video to really look at the truth of what will serve your clients, what will serve your business, and what will serve you. If you can answer those questions honestly, your refund policy will be fantastic and it will probably look really different from mine and a lot of other people's. Let's just look at the options out the gate. I'm going to keep it really simple and break it down into three categories. You can offer no refunds ever, you can offer refunds all the time, or you can do something in between. Okay, really simple. If you don't offer refunds, here are the pros and cons of that. Pros, when you sell a product or service and you tell people you have a no refund policy, you are more likely to get really full on commitment. It's not a guarantee, you can't guarantee anything that somebody else does, right? You can't control other people, thank goodness, and, and you don't really want to. But the refund policy like helps create a really solid container for pe people to step into. So they're not gonna say, yeah, I'll try that and then maybe I'll change my mind later. They'll be much more likely to really make the full commitment out the gate. And if your work is around personal transformation, that's generally speaking, that's a really good thing. Having said that, the, the sort of con or the challenge of, of a no refund policy is that it's demanding to enforce. Uh, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable and follow through on that even when people ask you for a refund and not everybody wants to do that. On the opposite extreme is offering refunds all the time and there are businesses that are set up this way. They expect people to ask for refunds and they want to build a kind of positive relationships with people and so they just offer refunds at the drop of a hat whenever they're asked for. It, that's another mode of business and if that's how you're going to do business that will also inform how you do sales it will inform how many people you're trying to sell to how many units you try to sell whatever it is so uh, the pros of offering refunds whenever they're asked for is that the clients generally like that the customers generally feel good about that and the con is that you, you may actually attract the opposite of the kind of customer or client that I just described with the no refund policy. I can totally out myself that there have been times when I've purchased something that was sold as a money back guarantee, right? Because I knew that there was no risk. And so then I didn't really put my everything into it. I was just trying it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be really clear. I said at the beginning of this video, this video is not about telling you what's right and wrong. It's in completely dependent on you and your business and what result you want to create for your clients and customers. And what I want you to understand is that the way that you frame your refund policy will attract not just different kinds of people, but different kinds of aspects of the same people, right? When I sign contracts that have no refund policies, I am all fucking in. And you better believe that when I say yes to something with no refund, no back door, no money back, no way out, I'm going to make the most of that no matter what. Whereas if you sell me something that is advertised as money back, there's no risk attached, I, that might be fine, but I'm going to show up differently around that because it's not requiring of me that I make a full commitment. It's not asking the same level of yes as a no refund policy. 
Of course, everything in between is also there. You can give refunds on a case by case basis. You can give refunds, uh, you know, in the first couple days after purchasing, but not a month or two after purchasing. You can, you can do everything in between. The pro of that is that it's flexible. You can give different people what's right for them. And you might even have a policy that allows you to be somewhat improvisational and make different decisions in the moment. The challenge of that is that it's complex. You have to be willing to hold all of that complexity and make those decisions without getting into a codependency or emotional activation. So we've all experienced all three of these buckets of refund policies, okay? I know that you've, you've experienced them on the receiving end. You may have even experienced them on the business end, on the CEO end. So how do you decide what kind of refund policy is best for you and your business right now? The first question to ask is what's going to serve your clients? What kind of refund policy will be in service to your mission in their life? Right? So if your mission in your clients' lives is to facilitate transformation and part of what you do is help them step out of their comfort zone and do something that they have never done before, then it's possible that a no refund policy or a, a modified no refund policy is going to serve your clients the most because they need all the help they can get to get into their full yes for their own change and growth. On the other end, you may not ever want to challenge your clients at all. It might be that the product or service that you offer is just meant to make them feel good. If your product or service is just meant to make them feel good, you want every part of your business to make them feel good, in which case offering refunds may very well be the best route for you. Ask yourself the question, if a client that you have worked with said, I want a refund the day that they purchased from you, what would be of service to them? Ask yourself the same question about the same day they purchased, a week after they purchased, a month after they purchased, what would be of service to them? And don't finalize your decision yet, just log that data. The second question to ask is what will be in service to your business, right? And you can look at the same three scenarios. If someone asks for a refund the day they purchase, what's in service to your business? And when I ask this question, basically what I'm asking is like, is it gonna be worth the time, money, and energy to not give a refund or have a conversation where you try to coach your person back into their yes, or is it gonna be easier, more cost-effective, and more efficient for your business to just let it go? Same thing a week later, same thing a month later. Right? If, you've been, if you've been offering your coaching services or uh, your client has had access to your course materials or they have been using your product for the last month, what's going to be in most service to your business a month after they've had that tool? Again, don't make any final decisions yet. Just track that information, what's going to really benefit them, what's going to benefit the business. And then the final question is really about you. And this is where I want you to get really honest with yourself because whatever your policy is, you have to be willing to stand by it 100% and feel great about it. And I'm here to tell you from experience that when you don't do that, that's when you cause the drama, challenge, emotional reactivity and overwhelm for yourself. So think in advance. This is one of those places where it's really helpful. Always expect the best in your business and your life. Expect the best. Everything is for your benefit. It's all here to help you. Expect it to go well. In support, in preparation for it going really, really well, one of the most important things you can do is to anticipate what will happen if the worst happens, right? So just look at that truth. What would happen if your very favorite client or your best customer or whatever asks you for a refund after they've been using your services, the worst case scenario, they're really upset, they're disappointed, they're, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is for you, this is gonna be very personal. Think through what you're willing to stand by. And it, it, either way, right? If you have a no refund policy, 
Are you willing to say absolutely no, I don't care what story you bring to me, I don't care how unhappy you are with me, there's no refunds, we talked about that from the beginning and I'm not moving. That can be very uncomfortable. So can you, if you have a no refund policy, can you commit to that, stand by it, hold firm to it, stay true to it and feel great about yourself, great about your service, great about your business and totally confident about how this is serving your client at the same time. If not, don't have a no refund policy, <laughs> right? If you aren't willing to stick by it, it's not worth having. On the other side, let's say you have a full refund policy. You give refunds all the time. Anytime they're asked for, you're happy to give it. Same thing, expect the best. People are gonna always love your product and service. They're never gonna ask for refunds. That's the best case scenario. And plan for the worst, anticipate the worst case scenario. People ask for refunds, you give them. You give them without even a second thought. Can you give refunds and feel great about it? Feel deeply empowered. Feel fantastic about your service, not take any of it personally. Right? So the, the opportunity in this video is that you come up with a clear understanding of what refund policy needs to be in place to be in full alignment with your mission and service to your clients. That's number one in full alignment to your business and its sustainability and efficiency. And finally, in full alignment with you and your willingness to follow through and feel great about it when it happens. That's the whole point of deciding in advance how you wanna do it, is you decide in advance, this is how I can do it so that I feel great, so that I feel in integrity, so that I feel empowered, so that I don't get sucked into the emotional drama or activation of any of this material when it comes up. I don't want it to come up perhaps, but if it comes up, no problem. I know how I handle this stuff. Make sense? All right, so you have all the questions that you need to ask yourself in order to determine what refund policy is right for you and your business and your clients. Your job is to give yourself a half an hour to really go deep with each of these questions. What's gonna serve your clients? What's gonna serve your business? And what's gonna be in alignment for you? What are you willing to follow through on? Get really honest with yourself about those three categories. Figure out how they line up, right? Because they, they, they gotta be the same thing. They are the same thing. You can't want one thing for your customers and something else for you. There is a sweet spot where these all like lock in, snap to, right? Like where they, they kind of fit together and you get to feel really great about it. The thing that I will caution you against is that it's not necessarily gonna feel good. Now, best case scenario, it does. Even a refund conversation can feel amazing. And if it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got the wrong refund policy for you, okay? It's got, that's why I'm encouraging you to think this through in advance because when you are not in the moment of the emotional trigger, that's when you're gonna have this clarity. In addition to all of that, the thing that will make the most difference in minimizing the amount of refunds that you're asked for is simply mastering sales. And so I wanna invite you again to click in the description box below and download my free ebook which explores the five biggest blocks that entrepreneurs face in their sales when they're building to seven figures. It is such juicy, valuable content. I can't recommend this more and it's totally free. So download that. It's linked in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, if you liked this video, if you have questions about this video, all that stuff, I would love to know. I read all the comments that you guys write. So please let me know what lands for you, what questions you still have, and we'll keep diving in. You guys are incredible. Continue doing what you're doing and enjoy the journey. Enjoy the learning. See you next time. Everything you want is already